Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see you sitting in those pews. Good morning, Teresa. Thank you for that wonderful prelude. That was great. My name is Mark Gideon. I am glad to welcome you to Asbury United Methodist Church. I'm honored to be the song leader here. Just a couple things. This is a great time to fill out your green attendance card so we have a record of your attendance. Also, if you've ordered nuts, the nut orders are here. So take your nut orders home. And don't forget to pick up a quiche order form for the United Women in Faith quiche. Anytime anybody will fix food that I don't have to cook, I will buy it. So that's why we are want to buy those quiche. You can get them fresh or frozen, and they're wonderful, so make sure you pick up those order forms. So to begin our worship service this morning, we want to welcome all of you and also welcome all of our online worshipers with us. And we're going to start out the service with a song from Alabaster. Here we go. If you would please stand if you're able and join us. We are going to do You Say. This is a song that really speaks to me. No matter how low you may be feeling in your life, in God's eyes you are always enough.
Thank you, Alabaster. That was wonderful. It's now time for us to do, say the Apostles' Creed. I love saying this in every service because it is a profession of the things that we believe in. My mother uh, was a teacher in a one-room schoolhouse. She started teaching at the ripe old age of 18 because at that time in Douglas County, when you graduated from high school, you could get your teacher certificate. And she always had recitation night with once a year with all of the kids. And she told all of her students and all of the Gideon kids, when you stand up, speak up, and speak it like you mean it, and mean it because you live it. So that's what we'll do with the Apostles' Creed, if you'll join me now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, now it's time to get out there for handshakes and hugs. All right, that's the signal for Methodist musical chairs. Find our way back to the pews. And it's now time for the children's moment. So if children, if you can come up front with Pastor, we'll have your time together. How are you today? I brought something. We've been talking in our sermon series about a portrait gallery of faith. Do you know what a portrait gallery is? Have you gone to see any, like in an art gallery, have you ever seen where it's kind of lined the wall? Yes. Yeah. Or sometimes people have things like that in their house on the wall. I talked about that last week. And so I brought these to show you. These are the ones that I keep in my office. So that's my husband and one of our sons, and another son, and my daughter. So we keep these family photos, don't we, up on our walls or out in our um, 
house because they're people who mean a lot to us, right? Yeah. And so they all have a story. And their story overlaps and influences our own story, doesn't it? Yeah. So what we are talking about uh, with our portrait gallery of faith, not only are there lots of stories in the Bible about a lot of people whose faith impacts ours, but everybody out here is also like one of those portraits in that gallery. If you were to look out there, everybody out there has a story, a faith story, and it actually weaves in together with yours. So what we've been asking people to say is, by faith, I do this. And so what what is it that God, God helps you do? I'm putting you on the spot here. God helps you do a lot of things, I know. It's probably hard to pick one. Um, he helps you get better at drawing. <laughs> yes, God helps us. Well, hello, Jay. God helps you get better at drawing. Hi, Jay, how are you? Can you tell me something that God helps you do? Can you think about it in a minute? God helps us do a lot of things. Be kind. Be kind. That's a very good one. And then how about you, Janet? God helps me to stop and listen. Very good. God helps us stop and listen. And I think that's amazing you said that because we're going to be talking about that in the sermon. <laughs> so what I did is I've got something for you. Do you know what this is? Right, it looks like a frame for a picture, but it's not, it's the matting that goes, right? But you're right, you are exactly right with what you said. I was gonna give each one of you one of these, because look at that, we have a portrait of Lincoln. <laughs> and we have a portrait of Mr. J, oh, these are awesome. You can hold that up in front of your face if you want. Janet, I'm gonna let you have one too. Now, what I'm gonna let you do with these, look at these. These are just a few of the portraits of the, the people that God is working at in their lives among us. And so we are so grateful for each one. These are the, the most amazing ones right here. <laughs> so thank you all for that. What I'm gonna let you do is take that with you and I want you to think about by, by faith, like God helps me do what? You can draw a picture, you can take a picture of yourself doing it, you can draw on the little frame there and just put that up and remember that God helps us do good things for God's kingdom, right? Okay, so that is what I have for you this morning and let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for each person in this room and the way that you work in beautiful ways through each life. Each life has a story. We are grateful that our stories get to impact these young lives as well as how they uh, bring joy and delight into our own. Bless them as their story unfolds, that they may by faith serve you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all.
Thank you, choir. And now at this time in our service, it's time for our offering. I want to speak to you just a moment about ways that this church is giving. Yesterday, they had a Methodist men's work day, but it wasn't just the men here. They coordinated the work where we had folks inside and outside the building working to keep our church up to snuff, and they did a wonderful job. We've got the nut sale that has just concluded and people are picking up their orders. We're ordering quiche for the United Methodist Women in Faith. And then coming up starting next Sunday, we'll be start taking orders for poinsettias to adorn the altar for December 22nd. The orders will start on November 17 and will conclude on December 15. They'll be $12 a piece, and they're going to be kind of a pink and white marbled color. Be very pretty to go with our Advent color scheme for the holidays. And then uh, after the, after the uh, uh, poinsettias, on Monday, November the 25th, we're going to decorate the church for Advent. There'll be two different work sessions, 10 to noon on Monday morning, and then six to eight on Monday evening. And if you can work either one or both of those times, that will be great. We'll get as much done as we can on Monday. And if we have to return on Tuesday morning, the 26th, we'll do so. But we have bins to bring down, a tree to put up, nativity scene to set out. On Monday morning, we're gonna focus on taking apart the wreaths that we've had for several years, and we're going to redo them. So if you'd like to sit and cut ribbon, bring your own scissors. If you like to string ornaments on pipe, pipe cleaners while you sit, you can do that. If you are someone who likes to bring bins down from storage, I've got a job for you. So we have all kinds of things we'd like to do. And that's just another way that we're giving here at Asbury. Also in your pews, you're starting to see the stuffed animals. And this is the Asbury's promotion, our power of love for this year, for this month. And, and I'm seeing people hold those stuffed animals during the service, and that's what we want to do. During prayer time, during the sermon, hold on to those stuffed animals, and they'll go into the, the arms of children who are being taken out of homes in times of distress through, with our Springfield Police Department. So if you bow with me now for the offering prayer. Dearest Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning with our hearts so full for all the thankfulness and blessings you bestow here on Asbury. Thank you, Lord, for all the folks who pitch in to help with cleaning up the church, who sell the nuts, who make the quiche, who decorate the church, and who give of their time and talent and expertise. Everyone in this congregation is a member of the portrait gallery because they all have a story of faith and a story of work that keep our church going each and every day. Help us to remember that when we give an offering of our time or our finances, we're simply giving back the many blessings you have given us. In your name we pray, amen.
Oh God, we open our hearts to you and we lift our hands to you, ready to serve you. Thank you so much for the abundant blessings that you give us. It is out of those and with gratitude we offer these our gifts for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. As we remain standing, our hymn for this morning is on page 57, O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. It's the first hymn in the hymnal after all of the uh, communion things and stuff. We want to thank Teresa. As you notice, she might have had a patriotic bent with all of her music this morning. Well, tomorrow's Veterans Day. And Teresa wanted to play Anchors Away this morning for the offertory because her grandfather was Lifetime Navy, and she does that every year and to honor his memory. We never want to forget the sacrifices our veterans made. I know that there are veterans out there in our congregation this morning. My dad was a veteran, and we never want to forget the, the sacrifice they made so that we can live here in this country for free. All right, we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3, and 7. So hopefully I will not sing four, five, and six. So we'll see. <clears throat> Here we go. Scripture today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 11 through 15. We therefore set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira, and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It is a joy to be here this morning with and seeing all of your faces, and also I welcome and, and say that it's a, give, I give you a greeting to those who are joining us online. My name is Rachel Stone, and I have the honor of serving as the pastor here at Asbury. So we have been doing, as you can, you've heard several times this morning, a sermon series about the portrait gallery of faith, and that really arises from the Hebrews 11 passage where we are talking about all sorts of 
you know, that, that cloud of witnesses from the Bible and how their faith stories impact ours. But our question for ourselves during this series is what is your story? What is your faith story? And as I just said, the Bible is full of stories of women and men, young and old, wealthy and poor, healthy and ill, weak and strong, bold and timid, whose lives were transformed by God. By faith, they responded to God's call and they acted upon it. And their lives still speak to us today. So we know that by faith, Noah built an ark. By faith, Abraham moved. By, by faith, Moses led. Joshua served. Gideon fought. Ruth gleaned. Miriam danced. Timothy preached. By faith, the unnamed woman believed and was healed. We read about these saints in the Bible, and we realize they teach us about living and active a faith in God that generates action to make a difference in God's kingdom. And we begin to see ourselves among them. Even if we hesitate, we are among them. We notice that God, just as God did things for those faithful believers, God is also at work in our lives. We think, wow, God gave me courage to change, joy to dance, strength to persevere. Last week, we not only honored beloved family and friends who have gone before us and who are part of that portrait gallery of saints connected here at Asbury, but we also took a quick look at Abraham, the man who God called the father of all nations. Today, we are here to look at a woman who worked in the Roman province of Philippi and as we, you heard, her name is Lydia. And we're going to listen and kind of dive into her story now. So first, we're going to set the scene. And this scene is down by the river. And I can't say that without thinking of that song. I especially hear it from, Oh, brother, where art thou? Go down to the river to pray. I love that. So Paul and his companions have been on a missionary journey to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And during their travels, they encounter many people as they make their way through the region. And all along the way, people's lives are transformed as God opens their hearts and they eagerly listen and they believe in Jesus' saving power. So when his, Paul and his crew arrive in Philippi, there is no synagogue to visit. But they hear that people often gather at the river to pray. And so Paul and his team head to the river to visit with and to worship with the people they find there. And this is where they meet Lydia. And did you catch some of the details about Lydia and her story? I'm going to reread uh, verse 14. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. So let's think about who was Lydia? What is her story? One is we know that Lydia was a wealthy business owner. And she was a woman of means. She owned a successful business selling purple cloth. And so what's the big deal with purple cloth? What does that tell us about Lydia? Well, purple cloth was an incredibly expensive fabric to produce because of the source of the dye that they used. And I learned this week that it was a tedious and time-consuming process to extract the dye drop by drop from a certain shellfish. And that's what I read. I couldn't tell you more than that. I have no more expertise on that at all. But and somebody else said that perhaps she even had a contract, so to speak, of providing this cloth for the Roman soldiers. And the, so very few people could afford this final project, product. But the ones who could, the ones who purchased it were royalty and wealthy people. So Lydia had connections with well-to-do people in her community. She was a woman of wealth and influence in her community. 
Another thing we learn about Lydia is she was a Gentile worshiper of God, or other translations phrase it as God-fearing. She was a God-fearing woman. And in the New Testament, that phrase God-fearing was used to describe people who were not Jewish, but they adopted the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that is who they worshiped. And it was common practice for God-fearing people in the, of this Roman colony to find outdoor places together since they didn't have a synagogue. So we have this scene. Paul, who is God's missionary, and his crew arrive at the river and begin to speak of, to those worshipers of God. And he tells them of Jesus Christ, who was God's son, born of the Virgin Mary, Paul spoke about Jesus' ministry to the poor, the ill, the outcast, his compassionate and astounding teaching, his leading and training of the disciples, his trial and crucifixion, death and resurrection, and his ascension. Paul shares Jesus' commission to his followers to go and make disciples. And then we hear another thing about Lydia. God opened Lydia's heart to listen. We are told that God opened Lydia's heart to listen to Paul's teaching and imagine her exclaiming, yes, I believe this. I will go and make disciples too. What happened next according to our reading today? Well, let's read that. It's in verse 15. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. And there, that last phrase is a woman of influence quality right there, isn't it? She prevailed upon them to come. One thing that we learn about Lydia is this was uh, in Macedonia. This was Paul and, Paul and his teams, their, their mission, and they, they were setting out there. And she is the first one recorded as the first Christian convert in Europe. What an exciting and astounding conversion response. This brand new convert, Lydia, the first recorded Christian convert in Europe, was a female. She was head of household. She was a dealer in purple cloth. She was a woman of high status in the community. She had connections, and God chose her to host God's missionaries. God chose her to welcome people into her home and start a new fellowship of believers. And here's another thing we learn about her. Lydia led a church in her home. Her immediate reaction to her conversion was to offer hospitality to Paul and his friends. She is a model of generous and gracious hospitality, and she opened her home as an expression of our welcoming Christian hospitality. Not only did she welcome Paul and his companions, but Lydia's household, as I just said, became the first church in Europe. Her home becomes this hub where siblings of Christ found encouragement and spiritual growth and connection with one another and with Christ. It's especially remarkable that Lydia, a woman, is even included in scripture, let alone as one of the first leaders of the church. Her story demonstrates a key point. God uses unlikely people to achieve God's purposes. Maybe one of us, or many of us, or all of us feel like we are an unlikely person to be used by God. But one thing we're learning from Lydia is God uses unlikely people to achieve God's purposes. God's love is for everyone. Paul expresses that often in his letters, and one place uh, he expresses this wide open love of God is in Paul's letter to the Galatians. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. What does that mean for us today? It means those things. It means in Christ we are united. In Christ there is no social barrier. There's no rich or poor, no elite or ordinary, no blue or red. In Christ, there is grace and mercy, love and forgiveness, peace and light. God's love is for 
everyone. And the heart of God's church is open and ready and eager to be hospitable. Lydia's story teaches us that God cares about the heart. So an extraordinary thing about Paul's work in Philippi is the amazing cross-section of the population that he won for Christ. First, we learn of Lydia, who came from the very top end of the social scale. Immediate fo immediately following Lydia's story in Acts 16 is the story of a slave girl from the bottom tier of the social scale. And finally, in Acts 16, we hear the story of the conversion of the Roman jailer, one of the sturdy middle class who made up the Roman civil service. In that setting, this must have been strange and surprising to witness to see all these different people coming together from these different backgrounds. They're united. They're united in Christ. As one theologian put it, people of all walks of life are radically unified by their encounters with the Holy Spirit. Paul entered Philippi with a clear calling to spread the gospel. While there, the Holy Spirit changed three diverse lives, different in gender, nationality, social status, and personal need. All are one in Christ. So here's some lessons that we learn from Lydia's story as we pause at her portrait in this gallery. The Lord opened her heart to respond to God's message. Perhaps the most striking lesson from Lydia's story is her prompt and generous response to God's work in her heart. Immediately following her conversion, she insisted that Paul and his team come stay in her home to teach other people about Jesus, and her entire household was converted and became the first Christian community in that area. By faith, Lydia's actions snowballed into many more faithful followers, faithful believers. We could say, by faith, Lydia responded. And through her response, God enabled extraordinary beyond imagination growth. Who knows what God might have in mind to accomplish through us as we listen and respond by faith. So I invite you to consider these questions today. How has God opened your heart to respond to the gospel? And another question. Where do you have an open door for ministry now to invite other people in? to hear about Jesus in your home, school, your work, your neighborhood, your community. Asbury, by faith, let's respond. And remember our question, what is your story? What are you doing by faith? Maybe something like one of these. By faith, Martha waits. By faith, Anne drives. Tim repairs. James represents. Brian farms. Betty writes. Terry advises. By faith, Andrew designs. In our portrait gallery of faith series, we are practicing identifying and celebrating Jesus' transforming work in our lives. And then we practice inviting others to come and hear the story, to come and witness from our, the way we live our lives the impact that Jesus makes not just for us, but for the entire world. So as believers, we too have a spot in this portrait gallery of saints, saints that have gone before us, we are saints now, and the saints that are coming after us all have a spot in this gallery. And as others walk among us and view how we live our faith, they become intrigued by our story. They might marvel at the family resemblance. And they just might have imprinted on their heart the desire to learn more about Jesus. Imagine the impact that has on our world, a very weary world indeed. So your story matters. Your story portrays a remarkable creation by God the artist. 
you are part of the gallery of faith. So to demonstrate the power of our stories, we have two unique opportunities to witness testimonies of faith from our very own Asbury friends. Next week, several Asbury friends will share quietly their testimonies in worship. It's a very unique way to present a message. So I invite you and I encourage you to come and see what they have to say. Come prepared to be moved by powerful descriptions of God's amazing grace and mercy and work in people's lives. And then on Sunday, November 24th, we will present our own Asbury Portrait Gallery of Faith. And this is a beautiful opportunity to share part of your faith story. And I'm grateful to Kathy and to Margaret and to Nicole who are organizing all of this because each of you has this we invite each one of you to participate. We want to know a glimpse of your story because each of you has a meaningful encounter of God at work in your lives. And God wants you to share that. And this is a way to practice sharing that. God works in myriad and mysterious ways. And we hope to see your face, your depiction of your story in this beautiful display. And I encourage you again, contact Margaret or Kathy or Nicole to find out more details how to add your portrait to the gallery. I've already heard about what some people are offering and it sounds amazing. So Asbury, by faith, we celebrate God's work in our lives. Amen. One way that we uh, can respond to God's word in our lives is the ways, different opportunities there are for lay ministry. And Janice has uh, graciously offered to tell us a little bit. She is our district lay leader, and she has some opportunities about um, lay ministry. Thank you, Janice. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to share a, a, a one way this time about how you can get more involved or more, just more learning. And it's a program called Absorb that is available through the um, Missouri Conference website, Missouri Conference United, uh, United Methodist Church. And you can go to that. If, could you change that slide for me, please? Do you have that slide? Um, it's called Absorb Learning. And you can just go to the website and search for absorb and it takes you to a website where it provides all these different courses that you can take online at your own pace you can do them in a day you can do them over a month it doesn't matter you can stop and start it at any point there are all kinds of courses available you can pick and choose what you want one of the beginning ones is called the ministry of all believers and um, there, but there is congregational care, there is biblical interpretation, there are uh, quite a variety of different courses that you can take, and I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. But I would encourage you to go check it out. Take a course just for your interest. You're not signing up to become a member of something or do anything like that. It's for your personal learning. In, um, if you cannot find the website, I'll be happy to share that with you. You will have to sign up to be able to take the classes. But um, again, it's your own pace. Nobody's grading you or checking on you or anything like that. It's just for yourself. And it's just a way to grow closer to God and figure out maybe if you haven't figured out what your gifts are um, or, or what you're interested in, it might be able to help guide you with that. So please feel free to ask me questions at any time about that, and I encourage you to get on there and check it out. Thanks. Thank you, Janice. Now we are opening our hearts to, in prayer to God. So as we prepare for that, we have a list of our um, people, beloved people connected with our church family who have asked us to keep them in prayer. We especially remember um, Dan Scott this week as the services for his mom are Thursday. So let's see, visitations at 10 and the services at 11 at Herman Lohmeyer. 
And then we also have tomorrow morning the services for Janet Peck and her daughter Rebecca is back there. We are glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. And her husband, Dan, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, both are people who made a difference in our lives and who uh, lived by faith, and we are grateful for them. So um, you probably have things on your, on your own heart. Maybe you're wanting to ask God, what is it that God is asking you to do next by faith? But there will be a moment in our prayer where you can uh, offer those things up to God. God is listening. And if you would like to come and kneel at the chancel rail, you are certainly invited to do that as well. Thank you, Kathy. Asbury, as we respond to how can God use us and our faith stories, um, think of that as we're saying, responding in voice and song, um, here I am, Lord. Please pray with me. Here we are, God, each one of us sitting here, opening our hearts to listen to you, eagerly awaiting the change and transformation you have in store for us, opening our hearts to respond and to go and do, to go and make a difference in the world by faith. God, your grace is beyond measure. We, we come to you in awe, especially as we consider what scripture teaches us about you. Psalm 24 reminds us, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it, for he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Thank you, God, for planting within us a desire to know you, that indescribable draw to be closer to you whether we recognize it or not, it is there. Awaken us to your compassionate, generous, and saving love. We thank you, God, for this church family. Not only do you work in and through each one of us, you also place us together in community. You weave our stories together, often in unexpected ways. Thank you for each person here and for those who are unable to be present with us today. We marvel the myriad and mysterious ways you touch our hearts, opening us to respond in belief and faith. God, we pray for our country. This has been quite a week. We live in times of great division, anxiety, uncertainty, and confusion, but you, God, are God who brings unity out of division, order out of chaos, you calm the storm. Forgive us, God, for ways we stray from your purpose. Turn our hearts and minds toward living a life that glorifies you, that seeks to work together to make this world a better place for all. 
We ask that you help us dismantle barriers to collaboration. We earnestly ask you to keep at the forefront of our life a steadfast desire to respond to your call in our lives, which is to love and glorify you, God, and to love our neighbor. Help us to grow in generosity, justice, and mercy, and gracious understanding. Open our eyes to see and welcome and love others as you would have us love. Keep us aware of opportunities to connect, support, encourage, strengthen, and share with one another. Most of all, thank you for the forgiving and saving love of your son, Jesus, who brings us together. Develop in us a greater understanding of the height and width and depth of his love. Fill us to overflowing with the flame of your Holy Spirit so that the joy of your refreshing presence is what pours out of us into the lives of others and into this weary world. Today, God, we thank you for the blessing of belonging, of finding a place to be ourselves among others. Thank you again for this community of faith and the ministry you designed for us to do. At this time, we ask you to bless those whose names appear on our prayer list. You know their particular need. Please, please touch their lives with your healing presence and reassuring love. We also thank you, God, for those who have willingly sacrificed and served our country. Thank you for our veterans and their families. And now, God, we have joys and concerns and questions in our own hearts this morning, and we offer these to you in these next few moments. We either speak them aloud or quietly in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now with the confidence of those who believe in your saving and merciful grace, knowing you are a God that asks of us an open heart and uplifted empty hands, we pray together the words Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand and join me if you're able in singing the whole hymn, Here I Am, Lord? Um, we have a lot to celebrate uh, here at Asbury in all of our members and those who attend here, your gifts. And um, a lot of that is through your faith and through saying yes to God. Um, God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. And we're going to celebrate that in two weeks with a portrait gallery out there. And we'd love to celebrate all your gifts, whether it's the gift of bringing people to church, whether it's the gift of cards, whether it's the gift of um, the flowers, counting money, um, you know, nuts. We have so many gifts here. Um, so let's do our closing hymn. of night. 
many of you have the prayer card that we hand out? Do you have that handy with you? Did you get one of those? I happen to not have one. <laughs> Did you get one? I don't, but I'm thinking that the prayer is going to be on the screen. I'd like to read that together. Um, Yes, our prayer for the church this week. We've been having these every Sunday, pretty much, I think, since I started. And we thought this would be a good way just to raise all, our voice, all of our voices together in this prayer today. And then we will remember it throughout the week. So please join me. Patient God. God, thank, thank you for waiting, waiting for us, us whether, whether by, by the river, river in, in a quiet place, place in our, our home, in the busyness of daily life. life. You are waiting, ready to open our hearts if we would only make ourselves available to listen. Help us follow your lead so that we might watch your blessings abound in our lives and lives of future generations of believers. In Jesus' name, amen. By faith, go in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh,